Um, so really quick, the agenda for today, we're going to start off by diving into home banking. Now, home banking is if you're on your computer and you're logging in, you can also log into home banking from other devices as well, but it's usually going to be, it's, it's kind of formatted for your computer. And that's if you go to classact.org. Here, I'll show you right here. Um, if you go to classact.org, which is this, and you use this little login box, then that's home banking. And that's what we're going to go over first. And that's going to be kind of the bulk of the presentation today, so that's going to take the longest. Um, then we're going to hop into mobile banking, so we're going to pull it up on the app. A lot of it's going to be the same, so I'll just kind of touch on those things and mention a couple things that are a little bit different on the app. Um, and then from there, I'm going to talk about where there are some how-to videos online, and we're going to be adding to those as well. So if you run into problems in the future, you can also go to the how-to videos um, and watch those, and hopefully those will be kind of helpful for you as well. Um, at the very end, we'll go, well, actually, just to make sure it's worth going into, does anybody use ExpressLine or iTalk? It used to be ExpressLine, now it's iTalk. You call them for the automated? Okay, so we'll touch on that a little bit. I have a handout for that as well. That's what your other handout is, is if you call in and do the automated teller. And so that should kind of help you out with questions about that, but we'll just kind of go over how to read that. And then questions at the end. So without further ado, we'll hop into it. Make sure this is all. Start with home banking. Can everybody hear me okay in the back? Very good. So you'll log into your app and, or, or your home banking just as you have in the past. It might take it a second. Hopefully, we'll get that up. A little nervous. <clears throat> All right. So once you're in, this is what your screen will look like, and you'll notice you'll be on your dashboard. Now your dashboard is always set. It's always the first thing you're going to see when you log in. Um, it's a little bit different on the app, but on your home banking, this is what it's going to look like, and you've got your accounts right here. Um, so the main thing is, if you want just a quick look at your accounts, you got your checking, your savings, any loans or CDs will also be on there down below, and it always organizes all your checking accounts together, all your savings accounts together. Um, and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit different than how it was organized previously, just FYI. Um, and you can't really change the order, but you can, and I'll show you in a little bit, like you can uh, remove them, remove some of the accounts. If it's an account you don't really use, but you have, you can make it not show up or you can rename it, but the order is always gonna be the way it is. Um, now, once you're here, let's say you wanna dive into an account and look at some transactions. Um, you can do that one of two ways you can I think the easiest way is just to click on whichever account up here you want to view and it'll kind of dive you right into your transactions um, we'll get there eventually I hope there we go um, and you can see them from here and then we also have uh, you can also go to your accounts notice that this one's red because that's where we are this is now your accounts widget which brings me to another point so what you're looking at right here, before we dive into our accounts widget, is you've got these little squares or icons along the side. Those are your widgets. And basically, that's everything that you can do within home banking or your mobile app um, without going into a branch and that kind of thing. Um, so what the way I'm going to walk through tonight is just kind of going through each of those widgets and showing what they are and how they work. And we'll cover some frequently asked questions as well. Um, so whichever way you get in there, you're going to go into your accounts widget. And basically, you got your transactions now. No, no, that's that's. It. I'm glad you asked because that's that's the next thing I was going to go into. So the thing about this is that you're only going to see transactions as far back as September 1st or later. You're not going to be able to see anything prior to September 1st, which actually has to do with our data system itself. When we switched data systems, um, not we didn't transfer the transaction history because it's very expensive. And so we wanted to make wise decisions with money there. Um, but you can still access those, those transactions. And I'll show you how. And I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll hop into that right now just since it's relevant. So if you want to see anything prior to September, um, you're going to go to your e-documents widget. So for that, you see you got your widgets along the side. You'll notice for me here, none of them say e-documents. But you've got a little more button here. If you click more, all the rest of your widgets should pop up. Um, and one of those is going to be e-documents. When you click on that, inside of e-documents is going to be your e-statements. 
So this is anything prior to September. Now, once September's over, your September statement will pop up there as well. Of course, your statements only populate after the whole month is over each time. So you'll be in here. Now, quick note, you'll actually, you can always save Class Act money. If you don't like print statements, you can hit subscribe right here and you won't get a statement in the mail anymore and you'll just access it from here. Um, but either way, you can go to your statements tab right here. Once you're in there, it'll populate all of your statements. Now this should go back, I think about two years. Um, so you can access transactions quite a ways back, which is pretty cool. And from here, you'll just kind of click on whichever one, whichever month you want. You got August at the top and July and so on and so forth. If you want to go further back than you got there, you've got more right here. You can go to the next page of statements and view them that way. So even though they're not going to populate in your transaction history, you can always see them here, but moving forward, all of your transactions should always populate in transaction history. If they don't, definitely let us know because then there's something weird going on. Um, so if you, if you subscribe, it will knock you out of paper statements, but if you unsubscribe, you can still see your statements. If it, I know it looks like you can't, but even here, see how I'm not subscribed? I can still click on the statements button and it should still populate from there. So you should still have the option to click on statements. Okay, and another thing that I wanted to mention when you're inside of your transaction history, now we're kind of going back to transaction history. Um, when, there's a, a couple cool things you can do here. If you click on a specific transaction, you can get some details. Most of them are probably things you're not going to care too much about, except if you have a check image. Like if you sent a check and you want to take a look at that check, this is also where you're going to see that. You go to the transaction, you're going to click on it just like I just did, and you'll click this little pencil icon over here. And inside of that, your check will appear here. Now this account doesn't have any checks, so I can't really show you exactly what that will look like. But once you click that pencil icon, it'll show you your checks as well as the other information that it's got here. Just wanted you to know kind of where to find that because it's a little confusing. All right, and I think that's all I've got to go over as far as the accounts widget itself. So now, oh yeah, go ahead. So what? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So, and um, if we have time, I'll try to dive into that a little more later on. Um, but what this is, is you've got categories. So you can categorize your transactions if you want. So say that this was, now these ones are all like just transfers and stuff. So there's not a whole lot of exciting things to show you. But say it was like a bill and you wanted to show, okay, this is my internet bill. You can categorize it as an internet bill. And then if you want, you can even split, maybe only half the bill was internet and the other half of the bill was like your cable, you can split it up like that. And what that's helpful for is that it's gonna say that on your transaction, on your account, but also if you wanna build a budget, which is another thing you can do within home banking, then it'll also categorize it for your budget purposes. So if you wanna make a budget and you say, I'm gonna spend $100 a month on utilities, then you can split up your transactions and it, it'll know what it is when you tell it. So yeah, that's what that's all about. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, but in a simpler way, you can also just click this box right here, and that'll let you add a category, too, without going all the way into it. Yeah, that's a good question, though, because I'm glad you differentiated that. So this won't actually change where money is going. It's only changing it for your purposes to kind of look at it and budget and that kind of thing. So it's not going to actually put the money anywhere. Um, from that, you can always you can call us and set that up, and we can have it split up for you like that, though. That is still an option, just not through this part. Um, so now one thing that I always struggle with is I want to hop into my accounts and start transferring money, but you actually can't transfer money from the accounts widget, but that's why you got this next widget down here is your transfers widget. If you click on that, that's where you're going to transfer anything within the credit union. So this isn't going to be able to do like bill pay stuff where you can go outside of the credit union, but anything inside of the credit union you can do from this transfers widget right here. And very simply, the way it's set up is you've got whatever account you want the money to come from, you select here how much money you want to uh, you want to transfer. Of course, I only got $16, so it's not letting me select any of these boxes. I have to type it in down here. But I can say $10, and then you'll select the account that you want the money to go to, and then you can submit your transfer. And so it's I think it's pretty simple once you kind of look at it and think about it. It kind of makes sense. Um, now there are other things you can do if you want to like schedule a transfer. You can do that either from the classic method, and it'll kind of walk you through that. Um, again, you got your from, your to accounts, um, and then the amount, the date, 
and then your frequency. If you want, if it's something you want to transfer every month, then you can set that transfer up here. Um, again, this is different than if it's like your your income coming in and the way that that automatic income is set up. But if you just want to transfer from your savings to your checking every month, you can set that up here. One other thing you can do, as I mentioned, it's anything inside of the credit union. So if you want to send money to another member, you can also do that under your classic tab here by clicking this link right here. Um, and that's going to give you your, your member information to be able to tell it what member you want to send the money to. It should be popping up. Okay, so, so yeah, and there were a couple things I wanted to clarify about this. So you're going to type in their first name. Hopefully you know that and their last name or business name from there. I'm sure you've got that part down. Okay, perfect. I hope you know her name. <laughs> so then you're going to select whether it's a share account or a loan account. Um, their member number. Now, where it gets tricky, I think, for most people is the share ID. And the reason by for this is because our share numbers have completely changed from what they were previously. So before your share, your S1 was your savings account, right? And your S2 was maybe checking and so on and so forth. But those names have changed. Um, but I'll show you where you can see what your new share ID numbers are. And for this, we're going to go back to that original dashboard screen where you logged in at. Oh, just a second, and I'll, I'll get you in just, just for that. So if you're back on that dashboard screen, give me just a second for it to load. It shows it on that screen too. Um, but the easiest way, I think, is under each one, you've got your account number, and then it's dash this other four-digit number. That four-digit number is the new share number. So for instance, your checking account here is 0010, which is your first basic checking account. So if you just got one checking account, it's probably 0010. And if it's your basic savings account, it's probably 0000. And if you add more accounts, they're going to be different numbers. But anytime you want to know what that number is, you just click here. Yeah, so just like Kimberly was saying, if a uh, notification's not going through, that may be because of the way that your, num your phone number is set up in the system might be off. It may be listed as a home phone instead of a cell phone, and it's not going to know how to communicate with it. So there might be, or it may just be the wrong, a number you don't use anymore. And so you may need to update that and call us and just make sure that that's right. And we can fix it in the back end. Um, yeah, another thing, I know we had some people uh, with a cookies message popping up on the screen. Um, that'll happen sometimes. I believe you do have to allow cookies. It'll give you the option to allow for everything to work properly. Unless who knows otherwise. But if I remember that. It, yeah, I believe in that message, it usually gives you the option to allow cookies. If not, you can do it uh, yeah, through your browser settings as well. You can allow cookies, too, that way. I'm sorry, you had another question. So, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Sure. You will have to do it for each person. Now, to make it a little easier if you want to transfer multiple times, is there is this option to save account for future use. If you click that box, their account will pop up always as an option to transfer money to. And that way you don't have to fill this box out every time you transfer them, just the very first time if you check that box. I do want to note, too, that if you check that box and you decide later you don't want that to show up, so far we don't have a way to make that go away. So if you don't want that to stay there all the time, make sure you don't check that box. But it is it will make it easier the, the future time. So the first time you go through, you will have to do each person, unless they're joint on your account or something like that. Does that answer your question? All right. All right. Um, and then there's a schedule tab, too, which is kind of just a little bit uh, more detailed, allowing you to schedule transactions. But, of course, you can kind of do it from this tab also. Um, I don't know why it's not. It's, it's trying to get there. Um, but that's another option, too, is you can schedule it out that way. Um, the next one we'll go over is bill pay. So in your bill pay account, um, I don't believe anything will show up here until you start adding your bill pays in there again. Um, but you can always add a pay here at the top, or you can add a pay here down at the bottom. And um, then once you add them, they'll pop up here. Uh, as you do that, it should kind of walk you through the process. Um, so you select business or person. Let's say it's a business. You go to next. Um, you'll enter the name of the business, of course, at the top. Uh, the account that you want it to be funded from, the money 
is coming out of that account. Um, and then, and actually, James, you just correct me if I'm wrong, but the account number it's asking for here is the account that it's going to, correct? In bill pay? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so it's asking for your account and add a payee. And that's the account of the business you're sending the money to, not the account you're sending the money from. Because we already know that account. It's, it's, it was selected before. So I know that can be confusing, and the money may not go where you want it to if you put the wrong account number there. So I think that's everything on bill pay to go over. Um, card controls. This account actually doesn't have a card, If um, unfortunately, to really show you what it looks like. But basically, it's going to have a picture of a blank card there normally would pop up you'll click on that and then you can uh, you can you have the option to block or unblock the card so if you notice something fishy going on in your account and you want to stop it right away you do have the option to block the card from right there um, right now that's all you can do from the card con control screen is just block or unblock but you have the option to toggle it back and forth um, from the message center if you want to send us a message it'll go to our call center um, you can compose that right here only thing I wanted to mention here, um, like you know, you can choose one of the subjects uh, or just do other. And a lot of them will autofill. Oh, that one doesn't. Will autofill in the box here. Let's see if I can find one as an example. Check copies. Maybe it takes a second. There we go. Okay. And I know some people see it and they're like, well, that's not what I wanted to say. If, the, if you don't want to say this, this is only to make it easier on you. You can always just select it and delete it and then type whatever you want um, from there. So just know that that message might pop up, but you can just delete it out of there. And then it also gives you the option to select an account if it's a question about an account. But you can always do not an account specific question and select that too if it's not about a particular account. Um, you also have the option to up attach files if that's helpful. If you want to do a screenshot and send that over to show them what you're looking at, you can do that there and then you can send it through. So it's not 24-7, but all, while we're open during business hours and during the same hours that you can call in, it's those same folks that are reading those messages, So they and they are consistently going through those. So if it's after hours, you're not going to hear back until the morning, until the next business morning. Um, but during the day, people are, are looking at those. All right. Another thing you can do from here, the next widget down, is to apply for a loan or uh, an honors checking account. Um, it'll tell you here which accounts you can apply for online. Right now, it's only a few things you can apply for. You got personal loan, auto loan, overdraft loan, or an honors checking account. For anything else, you'll still have to call us or um, come into a branch to do it that way. But these ones you can do online, which makes that a little, a, a little simpler for you. Um, now, we do have some more apps. If you click the little more button here, it's got the rest of your apps here. Um, and, well, I guess we'll keep going in order just to not get confused. We already saw the accounts app or widget before. Um, you've got your budgets widget, which we talked about a little bit earlier. This is what that looks like. Um, you can make yourself a budget, which will actually be in your settings tab. So if you haven't made a, made a budget yet, it'll bring you here. And you can call it whatever you want. You can tell it which accounts you want it to be monitoring, what you want to be shown in there. You can set up some expenses, um, some categories. We were talking about the categories that you can add to transactions. And this is where you can add categories to your budget. So I don't want to go too in-depth there because that's just kind of a fun thing if you want to be able to do your budget. But it is pretty cool because you can also pull in your accounts from other financial institutions. And so if you wanted, so say you've got a credit card at another, at like a bank or something, you can actually pull that into your account to view here. And then you can have that in your budget also. So you can have all your accounts and budget in one place. This makes that a lot easier than doing like an Excel spreadsheet or doing it all by hand. It's just kind of a cool thing. So I don't want to dive too deep because it's not really a necessary thing. But it's kind of a cool thing if that's something that you like to do. Um, so let's see. So we'll keep chugging along here. So check services is the next one. And this is where you can order checks if you're out of checks. And this is also where you can do a stop payment on a check from here. And I'll show you that once it loads. So if you want to do a stop payment, you can click here. I just want to make a couple notes about stop payments. Um, you're going to choose your account, of course, and then you're going to have to put in your check number. Now, this is important. You'll need your check number or it does allow a range. But if you do the range of check numbers, it will stop all of those checks. So it's not just like kind of picking and choosing. It will stop each one of them. And from the, the online banking system, 
those are your only two options. So you will need at least an ID of your check number if you want to stop it from here. But the nice thing about doing it on here is that it's free if you do it from online banking or from the app. Um, and of course, you, you can put in the date and the amount from there. Um, the other information, you'll have to agree to the disclosure and then hit submit request and it'll stop that check for you. Now, if you don't know the check number, but you know the amount or the date, then you can always call us and have us stop it from there, but then you will be paying the, the stop payment fee if you do it that way. I believe it's $33. Okay. And then if you want to order checks, you can do that from this reorder checks tab along the top. Um, and you'll click the order checks button and it'll kind of walk you through that. Another thing you can do is your check withdrawal. Um, so you can have it uh, actually send you a check. You just tell it what account you want it to come out of, how much you want to pull out of that account and submit that. Um, and I believe that that'll get sent to your address on file if you order a check. Is that, do you know how that works, James? Oh, okay. Sorry. If you, sorry, I'm calling you out of the middle. Um, if you order a check through the system, like do a check withdrawal, will it mail you that check to your address? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Whatever's on file. So you want to make sure that that address is correct probably before sending. It should be correct, but just in case you recently moved or something like that, you just want to make sure that's right before you do that. Um, and we'll go over a couple more things. Um, we already kind of talked about, oh, I'm sorry, I was skipping over your overdraft preferences. If you don't already have um, your overdraft set up so that your account can go below zero, of course, there is a $33 fee for doing that, but you can set that up here and you can toggle, you can opt in or out. And then you'll just have to accept the disclosure at the bottom and save it there um, if you want to set that up or if you want to take that off and you don't want it anymore. You can always change it there. And then uh, another thing you got is your savings goals. That's another thing that's just kind of for fun. You can set up your savings goal from there. Um, this account I don't think has any set up, but you can set that up, them up there. Um, you can create a new goal, um, but just for time's sake, away from that. Your uh, locations, you can look up any branch or ATM locations from here. Now I will note there may be locations that we have that are free for you, like ATMs that are free for you to use um, that won't show up here because we're part of three different networks. And this is only showing you one network at the moment. We may be able to add the other ones in later on, but just so you know, um, this will show you most of them um, and whatever it shows you should be an active ATM that you can use for free or location uh, shared branch that you can use as well. If you do want to see the other ones, you can go back to our Class Act website and you go to uh, the about, you have the branch ATM info, and that'll bring you to a map where it will show you, it, this has all three networks in it. So there's, just so you know, that's a little bit different. Um, but either way, you're going to see most of them. Um, and then, from there, you got your, your calculator um, and calendars. You can, you can look at that, which is kind of cool, too. Do it. Um, but yeah, from there, uh, the only other thing I wanted to show you guys on home banking is you do have next to your name and your picture, there's this little drop-down button where you've got access to your messages again. This is that same message center as before. Um, you've got your logout and then also your settings. Um, so this is where you're going to be able to change things like your nickname, or you can also see recent logins in case if somebody else logged in from another device that wasn't you, you'd be able to see that here. You've got security settings if you need to change your username or password. Um, you've got access to themes and widgets, which are more just personalization if you wanted to change stuff around. Um, you've got, this is where you would update contact information if you needed to change your address. You can do that from here, as well as phone numbers and email addresses. You can also set up notifications from here. Um, this is where if you wanted to be set up to have receive an email for uh, a number of different things on this list, there's a bunch of different stuff you can set up where you can either get emails or text messages or what they call push notifications, just those other notifications that show up on your phone that aren't a text or an email. Um, so you can set all that up from here. There's tons of different stuff on here, so I won't go through all of them, but just know those are an option, but again, this is one of those things where if your phone number or email is set up incorrectly in the system, then that's also not going to work properly. So just kind of keep that in mind. If it's not working after you set it up, then that might be why. Um, you can also adjust. I mentioned where you can 
remove accounts uh, so you're not seeing them here or rename them. So that's where you can do that from here. You can also link an external account from here as well. Um, and then you've got your applications here too, which there's probably not a whole lot you need to worry about there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the overview of all that stuff. Um, I do, uh, I guess really quick, I'll just touch on our how-to videos because they're also right in here. They're not accessible from the mobile app. Um, but if you scroll down here, we've got a couple how-to videos right here and here. Um, but they all live in your financial resources and education. So you can always, you can click on one if it's one of these that you want to see, or you can click here. Um, I'm sorry, that's just your your settings. Uh, I thought it let you in from there too. Um, but you also have access to that up here. You can see all of your educational articles from right here. You click view more there, and then it kind of lets you into those types of things and you can search by topic and that sort of thing from there. Um, and then those also live online. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you can search by that as well. And our how-to videos are always updated on there also. Um, any questions about anything else with that online banking, how-to videos? All right. Um, I know we're at about seven o'clock. So if you if this is all you were worried about and you need to scoot, feel free to get up and leave when you need to. Um, we'll dive into the mobile app. And there's only a couple things that are terribly different. So I just want to talk about those, like remote deposit is one. Um, and, uh, uh, and that's the biggest thing. Locations and ATMs, like I said, looks a little different. So we'll go over that. Um, but yeah, there's a couple things to go over there. So maybe like 15 minutes or so, but I understand if people need to, to get a big go. I just wanted to let you know there. Now this is an Android app. So if you're on Apple, if you're on an Apple device, it's gonna look a little differently, but for the most part, everything functionally will work about the same. It just might look a little different. Um, you're going to open up to your account screen. It's a little bit different than the dashboard before, but you're going to be right in your accounts widget. Um, and basically you can click right on either of those if you want to view your transactions and it'll take you right into that. And you'll be able to see all your transactions again, all the way back to September 1st. You'll need to go to your e-documents just like before. If you want to see anything prior to that in your e-documents widget right there. And you'll just click on statements to see those. Um, and I know we had that question about how to print those. So you go to view statements. Oh, did you figure it out? Oh, cool. Well, very good. Um, and from there, you do need to click on the actual name share statement or it won't pop up. It may ask you what kind of viewer you want to use. You will have to choose one of those. Yeah, some, if, it's, if it's Apple, I think it has an automatic one it uses. Um, but from there, doo -doo 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 -doo, you should be able to print like that. Now, it might be a little bit different depending on the phone that you're using, though. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I guess, sorry, on an iPhone, it's going to look a little bit different um, than Air. But you should still have the option to print from your phone um, if you have a printer set up for that. Um, the other thing I want to touch on is back in the accounts widget. Um, this is also where you can deposit a check. So if you're looking at your screen, you've got these three little circles right here. Those are all buttons. So you can click on your remote deposit. You can go straight to your transfers from here or straight to bill pay from here as well. So from there, you click on that remote deposit right there. Um, and that's where you can choose your account, type in the amount of the check. Let's say it's $50. I don't have a check today to deposit. Um, and then from there, you can select uh, the front of the check and the back of the check. And that's where, just like on the old app, it'll give you the option to take a picture of the check. Um, and it will probably pop up this little message. You'll have to hit continue. But after it does that, then you're just going to align it to your check. Um, and take a picture of your check from there. And just make sure you do the front on the front and the back on the back. You want to make sure it is staying right really well in that window because if it doesn't, it'll yell at you and tell you that it's not taking a good picture of it. It does need a good quality picture. 
So any questions about that? I do want to note, um, in case you ever, if you ever run into a situation where you're not seeing a widget in your mobile app that you know that you should have, it may be, there's a way in online banking, if you go into that widget section we talked about earlier under your settings, you can remove widgets and you have to go back there to add it back in. So if you run into that issue, there is a, that might be what's happening, just FYI, because um, we've run into that before. Uh, but other than that, um, I think everything else is about is about the same there. Um, and so we'll take a look at the locations here just so you can kind of see what that looks like. Like I said, it's going to take you to our website. So just like if you went to classact.org, it'll take you to that same page right here where you can search for your ATMs and branch locations and that kind of thing that way. It does look a little bit different on the mobile app than it does on home banking, so I just want to kind of mention that. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention uh, was just the iTalk Express Line. So it was called Express Line. Now it's called iTalk. So you should have this handout. Um, for the most part, you uh, I just wanted to give this to you guys just because it kind of walks you through what all your options are on there. And I just think that since it's a new system, at least for me, it's easier rather than waiting for it to tell you everything when you're listening, you'll be able to see what all the options are on this sheet. Um, so it gives you the number to call. And then it also tells you what each number on your phone will do and kind of how that works. It's kind of the tree of options as you go along with each one, just so you can kind of see what they all look like. Um, and then, of course, another thing just to point out on here is the second bullet point mentions that uh, at any time you can press one uh, and the star key, zero, three and the star key, pound, or just the star key. And those options are always available. So if you're, you find yourself... You're, you're listening through and it's not where you want to be, then you have those options at any time you can press those buttons. You don't have to wait for something, for it to tell you something. So that's kind of helpful as well. Any questions about that? And any other overall questions for me? All right, if you, if you do have questions that are kind of like a personal thing, feel free to come up to me um, or someone else that's working here. Um, but. We'll go ahead and do the drawing, and then I'll let you guys get home.